Hello everyone, this is topic 9 for exam 3, the method of partial fractions continued. Last time we looked at case 1, linear factors, now we look at case 2, what um, I refer to as repeated factors. Um, so the idea of the repeated factors is basically how we're going to deal with powers of the same quantity. For example, um, if you consider, let's say, x cubed. That's a power which can be expressed as a repeated factor of x, three factors of x that are repeated. Uh, similarly, any power. You might even have a, a linear, like x minus 5, maybe being squared. That really means x minus 5 times itself. So that's the idea of repeated. So repeated factors are really just powers. Now, because it's the same factor that's repeated, um, we can't just have, like for example, three separate fractions with just x in the denominator of each. What we would have to consider um, when dealing with these non, because they're nonlinear, because they're powers, um, consider if you had maybe in the expression you had an x cubed as part of the as a particular factor of the denominator. Well, I made the fraction bar a little longer because what you would have to include is every possible term that might make the fraction proper. Now, I can't put an x cubed up in the numerator because then it would no longer be proper, but I could put an x squared. So I'd have to account for an x squared term, and I'd also have to account for the fact that there could be a linear term, so we'll call ax squared and then bx the linear, and then there could be as well a constant term. Now, that's not the way we're going to set it up. What we're going to do is we're going to notice a little pattern here after we manipulate this algebraically. I'm going to divide that x cubed into each term of the numerator. And then simplify. So we get a over x plus b over x squared and then plus c over x cubed. So what I want you to notice about this result is the little pattern that exists on how to deal with these powers or repeated factors. Basically, you just start with, you're going to have as many fractions as is the power on the repeated factor, and you're going to start with that unique factor raised to the first power in the first fraction and keep increasing the power until you reach the power that it is. And then here's the key. What goes above each of these would be whatever makes the unique factor proper. In this case, it was a linear factor that was repeated, so just a constant term, so therefore a constant term above each. So I want to try to reinforce that with these examples here. Um, this says show the partial fraction decomposition, um, but do not evaluate the constants. So I notice that x to the fourth is a power, so it's a repeated factor. And because it's fourth power, I'm going to have four fractions. And in the first fraction, I start with the unique factor, which is x, raised to the first power, and then keep increasing the power in the subsequent fractions. So x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. But then what goes above each of these is whatever makes the unique factor proper. And since it's x, linear, just constant terms. So constant terms above all of them. See, by doing it this way, it makes four unique fractions that account for all the possibilities as we illustrated up here. So we don't want you to, we don't want you to go about it using this method here. We want you to use the little pattern concept. Okay, um, and then I've got to account for this x minus 1 is probably 
just a little extra term I put in there. I guess we put an E over that. Okay, and then here's another example, further reinforcing that concept. X squared, so two factors, or two terms, that is. One with X, one with X squared. It's a linear term, so a constant, A and B. Okay, X minus 1 cubed, three factors, or three terms, that is. One with X minus 1 to the first, or just X minus 1. Then one with X minus 1 squared and one with x minus one cubed. And then what goes above each of those, once again, is whatever makes the unique factor proper. It's a linear term, so just constants. So C, D, and E. Okay, so we'll use that idea to um, evaluate things that involve powers now, repeated factors. So this is already factored for us, so we'll set up for the partial fraction decomposition. Take out the 1 over x cubed times x plus 5. Okay, note that we have a power, a repeated factor, in the form of x cubed. So there's going to be three fractions coming from that. The unique factor is x, so x to the first or just x in the first fraction. Subsequent fraction x squared, then x cubed. And what goes above each of those, whatever makes the unique factor of x proper, since it's a linear term, just constants all the way across. All right, and then we've got the x plus 5 as a separate factor. That as well is linear, so just a constant term above that. All right, so then the working equation. Clear the fractions. <coughs> Excuse me. We're multiplying by the least common denominator, which is the denominator on the left, the x cubed times the x plus 5. If we multiply a over x by that denominator, one factor of x cancels. Let's see, on the left, we always get the numerator, so 1. If we multiply a over x by that denominator, one factor of x cancel. So I'm left with x squared and x plus 5. Multiply b over x squared by that denominator. You know, if you want to throw an x cubed, x plus 5 right next to it, you can see x squared cancels with the x cubed to leave you with an x, so plus bx and an x plus 5. c over x cubed multiplied by that denominator. The x cubes cancel. Get c times x plus 5. And then finally, d over x plus 5 multiplied by that denominator. The x plus 5's cancel, and we get dx cubed. Okay, now we always suggest the elimination method first. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to let x equal 0, and I should be able to solve for a. But actually, when you have these repeated factors, it's not the unique factor that you're going to be able to solve for the constant above it. It's the highest power because that's how you get a cancellation in the working equation. So this is actually going to allow me to solve for c. Notice that the term containing a goes to 0, because x is a factor, term containing b, x is a factor, so that goes to 0, and the term containing d goes to 0 as well, because x is a factor. So 1 is equal to c times 0 plus 5. So 1 is 5c, and c is one-fifth. <clears throat> okay, and then the only other value of x you could choose, because you, you can't pick another zero, you're going to get the same thing. The only one would be whatever causes this x plus 5 to be zero. And that would be negative 5. And that's going to allow me to solve for d. So in the working equation, 1 equals... Notice the terms containing a, b, and c all contain x plus 5 as a factor, and by letting x equal negative 5, those are all dropping out, going to 0, and we just get d times a negative 5 cubed. So 1 equals negative 125d, and d is negative 1 over 125.
Okay, so now we've exhausted all the possibilities in terms of using the elimination method, that is choosing strategic values of x that are going to zero things out and allow us to solve for the constants. So now we have to combine that with the comparison method. So we have to compare some things. Now notice that um, we know C and D, so we have to solve a for A and B. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just start comparing the highest powers of x in the working equation. And you have to imagine distributing this ax squared and the bx and the c. So highest power of x would be x cubed. And on the left hand side there are not any x cubes at all so we could write 0 x cubed. On the right hand side if you imagine distributing the ax squared you get an ax cubed. And if you distribute the bx, you only get a bx squared. And if you distribute the c, you only get cx. So the only other x cubed involved in the working equation is d. <clears throat> so plus dx cubed. Then we divide out the x cubes. We get 0 equals a plus d. Fortunately, we know d. So 0 equals a plus or let's say minus over 125 and so therefore a is positive 1 over 125 okay and then I'm just going to kind of systematically compare powers compare the x cubes let me go down to the x squareds now, on the left, once again, in the working equation, there aren't any x squareds. So we could write 0x squared. On the right, if you imagine distributing this ax squared, you get 5ax squared. And similarly, when you distribute the bx, you get a bx squared. But then there aren't any other x squareds. Now, I would ask you to do that mentally, like I just did the distributions. If you really wanted to take the extra step and literally show the distribution, and then pick off the um, like powers, that's fine. But what I wrote in red there, it's not necessary, but if that's helpful, by all means use it. Okay, divide out the x squareds at this point. 0 equals 5a plus b. Fortunately, we know a. It's 1 over 125. So 0 equals 5 times 1 over 125 plus b. And then b would be, okay, that'd be 125th. Move it to the left, negative 1 over 25. Okay, so now the original integral. I'm going to recap it. 1 over x cubed x plus 5 with respect to x is now equal to the integral of, and then to our partial fraction decomposition, we have a over x. So that's 1 over 125 over x plus b negative 1 over 25 over x squared plus c one fifth over x cubed and then finally plus d a negative 1 over 125 over the x plus 5. Okay so now I'm just going to take a step and um factor out the constant multiples and I'm not really going to do too much here because I want to make a comment I mean I could actually do a couple things at once but I want to make a couple comments to make sure we're all comfortable about to happen because it's very important so I'm just going to factor out the coefficients 
So 1 over 125 times the integral of 1 over x with respect to x minus 1 over 25 integral of 1 over x squared with respect to x and then plus 1 fifth integral 1 over x cubed with respect to x and then minus 1 over 125 integral 1 over x plus 5 with respect to x. So the important thing here is this. 1 over x, that's readily integrable. That's the natural log of the absolute value of x. This final integral, x plus 5, we could treat as our u. And the 1 dx is identically our du. So that's just going to turn it into the natural log of the absolute value of its denominator. But these two middle terms are powers. And when we have integrals that involve powers in the denominator, recall that you have to bring that term to the numerator. So therefore, what we're going to do, hope I can fit all this in here, I think so. I'm going to recopy the first one. And because it's a power, so this is very important, make sure you realize whenever you have a power in the denominator, bring it up to the numerator. So x to the negative 2. Similarly, 1 fifth integral power in the denominator up to the numerator, x to the negative 3. And this one we're going to leave because we already discussed the fact that it fits t over u. Okay, so I'm going to bring it all the way over here and do the integrations and then write out the final answer. So here we get 1 over 125, natural log absolute value of x, minus 1 over 25, integrating x to the negative 2, power 1 greater, negative 1, divided by that new exponent. Go to the next term, plus 1 fifth, tags along, integrating x to the negative 3, x to the negative 2 is power 1 greater, divided by that new exponent, and then finally minus 1 over 125, and that becomes the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5. Add our constant, and I have to squeeze things in, maybe not, um, I want to get rid of the negative exponents on these guys. So, recopying 1 over 125, natural log absolute value of x. Okay, this becomes positive 1 over 25, and x to the first can shift to the denominator. And then this will be minus 1 over 10 x squared, and then finally minus the 1 over 125 natural log absolute value of x plus 5 and plus or constant. Okay, so sorry for having to squeeze things in there, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, again, get rid of the negative exponents on these guys. Um, but the very important thing that we saw that kind of new was the concept of integrating these powers. So, ever have a fraction with the power in the denominator, bring it up to the numerator and integrate it that way. Okay, so we've got one more example to reinforce um, this concept, but we're at the 18, 19 minute mark. So, we'll come back when you're ready and we'll look at a second example um, to reinforce this idea. So, we'll see you when you're ready.